Today, let's talk about tuners. So through the years, I've used pretty much every tuner you can imagine. Uh, I've tried them all. My first one was the early Boss. I think it was the TU-2. Uh, I then moved to Polytune whenever that became popular. I remember Casey Moore was like, you gotta try the Polytune where you could strum an entire chord and kind of see everything at once. Uh, I never took to that very well. I don't feel like I got real accurate tuning on the Polytune, so I ditched that. I ended up trying to pitch black whenever uh, Billy Wilson told me, hey, you need to try the pitch black. It's a really great tuner. I used it for a while. That, that's by Korg. And um, it was okay. The pitch black was okay. But I found myself, for accuracy, once the Boss released the TU-3, it had much more LEDs on it. And uh, I felt like the TU-3 got way more accurate. And actually the one that's on my pedal board now is the Waza version, which is black. And so that's the one that I use for electric guitar today. But I'm, I find myself tuning all the time in the studio and mostly it's acoustic instruments. And so these tuners don't do me any good when I'm sitting at a studio desk trying to tune instruments up to record acoustic instruments all the time. And so I, I found myself looking for something else. Um, I thought that I might end up with a Peterson like Strobicon tuner. The problem with those Peterson tuners is they're just so expensive. Um, I want to say they're almost $200, maybe $180 for one of those um, tuners. And I have two studio locations, well really three, that I work out of all the time, but two main studio locations, the one here at the house and then the one at work. And so I really needed two tuners, one at each location where I have instruments and I end up doing tracking at both. And so Strobicon tuners would end up being $400 worth of tuners. And then I really wanted one at the church as well. so. Um, that would end up being like $600 worth. For years, uh, I always found myself using these little cheap tuners that I would find, that you find in a music store, and in this case, I found these on Amazon.com. What I found about these chromatic tuners is they don't always catch what note you're trying to tune, and that drives me crazy because I'm not just going in order of a guitar string. I'm not tuning string one, string two. Like I'm picking an instrument and I can get close to the pitch that I'm wanting and then I rely on a chromatic tuner to just kind of figure out what note I'm trying to get to and then allow me to do fine tuning on that note because I'm constantly doing open tunings, crazy tunings, different instruments. I'll pick up a mandolin. I immediately want to hit a string and get it close to E. I can pitch it pretty close and then once I get to that E note I want it to, to, to grab E and then let me get to the actual fine tune tune point. And what happens with these little cheap tuners all the time is the first three strings I hit do a great job. And then string four, string three, string four, string five, it can't figure out what I'm doing. And then uh, if I do a drop tuning on a guitar and I drop that, that last string, it seems like it can never find the low string if you drop it to try to do some sort of open drop tuning on it. So $20, $30 seems really nice until you're sitting there fighting and wasting your time. And that's one thing I cannot stand is when I'm sitting there in a creative moment wasting my time trying to figure out how I'm going to get this string tuned. So what I ended up with is the Korg Orchestral Tuner OT120. And uh, our friends at Sweetwater are the ones who ended up suggesting this tuner. And um, I've been very happy. The cons, it's plastic. I really don't like the cheap plastic feel of the tuner. Um, and it's also still probably more expensive than it should be. This particular tuner is going to run you about $80. But the pluses for this tuner is it is extremely accurate. It has calibration tools on it. And then it's actually got a screw in the back. So if the needle ends up getting off at some point, which they say over time it will, you can just put a little screwdriver in there and twist the screw and then the needle will come back 
to uh, true zero. It catches all the pitches. It's perfect. It's great. It's got a really good microphone on it. And this particular tuner has a lot of other features that I will never use. I just wanted a tuner that that gets things in tune. But it does have um, sound on it. It has, I use it, I leave mine in auto on medium, but you can put it in a slow mode to really fine tune. You can put it into a fast mode to get a quicker tune. It does have sound pitches on it and a little speaker, so you can play a pitch if you choose to do it that way, and you can choose the notes that you want it to play. Uh, on the front panel. For all practical purposes, this has been the perfect little tool for what I need done. So uh, I can't say enough good things about this one. I have already purchased two. I will probably be purchasing three. I may even purchase a fourth to keep in a case because it has been a great tuner and way more accurate than any of my other tuners, including uh, my pedal tuners. Um, it's just a more accurate instrument um, designed for orchestra and band, no doubt, but um, a great tool to keep in your studio. So if you're looking for uh, a good tool for tuning and something to have that will tune everything, anything and everything in the studio or in your project studio at home, this is going to be the ticket I think that you will, will really like this particular tuner. And I will say this is not a sponsor. None of my videos are sponsored videos. Um, these are just products that I've used that I really like that I want to share with you guys because maybe this will be a tool that helps you out in your studio as well. So here is uh, just a quick demo of the Korg tuner. I wanted you to be able to see exactly what uh, the tuner looks like when actually you're using it in real life. And so I've just got a guitar here. I'm about two feet actually. I'm probably about a foot and a half, two feet from the tuner mic, just so you can know about the distance. Sitting on the disc and I'm sitting over in front of the disc. So here we go. So that's it, a short video today. Drop me a comment letting me know what your favorite tuner is and perhaps why. Any of you who might have the Strobicon, let me know how that uh, tuner works and maybe how what your experience has been with the Strobicon tuner because I've always been told that they are the uh, gold standard for accurate tuning. Um, probably possibly more so than this actual Korg. So I'd be curious to hear somebody who has a Peterson uh, Strobicon tuner, what your experience has been with that. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, it's gonna help my reach, and uh, we'll see you next time.